big thank you to Arolo for sponsoring this video. Hey everybody, Josh here. So today I wanted to talk about how to get access to data while traveling abroad. If you are going on a trip outside of your home country anytime soon, it's a good idea to have access to data when you're in those countries, especially for things like communication, navigation, and just emergencies in general. Even if you aren't traveling soon, it's a good idea to understand how it all works and know what options you have available to you. Now, in the world of getting data onto your phone, there's essentially three ways to do that, and all three ways are essentially doing the same thing, which is connecting your phone to a local carrier. Now, the first and most direct way to get your phone connected is by directly connecting to that local carrier. To do that, you'll need a SIM or an eSIM, whatever your phone supports. Now, theoretically, this first method of connecting to that local carrier is the most simple. There's no middleman involved, and essentially, once you get that SIM or eSIM, you're good to go. However, it is getting that SIM or eSIM that is the tricky part. This method does require some time and research into a couple of things. So firstly, it's what carrier are you going to go with, right? It's a foreign country and you might not be familiar with the carriers in that country. A lot of times these carriers websites are going to be in a different language and currency. So it just makes researching a little bit harder. And then once you figure out which carrier you want to go with, once you land at your destination, you are going to have to navigate to a physical store in order to buy a SIM or eSIM, which may be the last thing that you wanna worry about, especially if you're on vacation. Now, I believe you can also buy SIMs and eSIMs at airports, but again, it just is a little bit stressful, especially if you're traveling. So yeah, while this method may be the most direct and possibly the cheapest, it can be a little bit confusing and does require a little bit of time and research. Now, the second way to gain access to data internationally is called data roaming. You may have seen this toggle in the settings of your phone, but never really understood what it actually does. With data roaming, your home carrier is essentially saying, hey, we see that you're in a different country and you need access to data. Now, normally you'd have to pay that country's carriers directly, remember option one. But we're gonna save you that trouble of research, buying a SIM and putting that SIM onto your phone. And instead you can just pay us and we're gonna handle all the business stuff on our end and you can start accessing data immediately. Sounds pretty nice, right? But there's a catch and the catch is that it tends to be expensive. From my research, two of the major US carriers are gonna charge you $10 a day for each day that you use data and that can add up pretty quickly. Considering that most vacations are around one to two weeks, you can expect to pay about 70 to $140, which sounds kind of absurd for a couple of gigs of data. So that basically brings us to our third option, Aerolo. Similar to data roaming, Aerolo also functions as a middleman between you and the foreign carriers. But instead of charging you absurd rates like $10 a day, their rates are actually very reasonable. Aerolo offers plans either by specific country, region, or even a global plan. Regional plans can be nice if you're hitting up multiple countries within a certain region, for example, like Asia or Europe, where a lot of countries tend to be closely packed. Also, Aerolo supports more than 200 countries and regions, so it's likely wherever you're visiting, there's gonna be a plan for you. Now, let's just click into some of these plans and see what kind of pricing we're getting. So let's say we're going to Japan. For a 10 gig plan that lasts for 30 days, you're gonna be charged $18. $18, that's insane. Compare that to $10 a day, that basically makes this a no brainer. You can also get a five gig plan for $11.50. Now let's go over to the UK. And if we look up the same plan, 10 gig for 30 days, $22.50. Maybe we're going to Switzerland uh, for 10 gigs, that's $24. Now, another huge benefit of using Aerolo is the ability to see how much data you have left and the ability to top up your plan with more data if you need it. And honestly, the best part about using Aerolo is the convenience factor. The fact that you can load an eSIM onto your phone weeks or even months before your flight is a huge time saver. And it really took me less than 10 minutes to download the app, make an account, 
account and buy an eSIM. As you can see, I've already purchased an eSIM for Taiwan and I just have it on standby. And when I land, I can activate it. Now in these plans, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can also see what type of plan it is. And a lot of these plans are gonna be data only. What this means is you're technically not gonna be given a phone number. So you aren't gonna be able to make calls or text. But if you need to do those things, obviously you can use internet-based communication apps like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Line, GroupMe, and probably a couple more. Oh, and you can also use iMessage if you're messaging from iPhone to iPhone. Now, there are basically two requirements to start using Aralo. The first is that your phone must be eSIM compatible. If you aren't sure if your phone is eSIM compatible, just do a quick Google search, or there's a link down below that you can find a list that Aralo made. Now, the second requirement is that your phone has to be carrier unlocked. On the iPhone, you can actually check pretty easily in settings, general, and about. If you scroll down, you'll see a section that says carrier lock. And if your phone says no SIM restrictions, that means your phone is carrier unlocked. All right, so to quickly wrap it up, which method should you be using? If you find yourself traveling to the same country all the time, maybe for business, then I'd say option one probably makes the most sense for you as you'll be more familiar with that country and it'll probably be the best long-term solution. However, for the casual traveler, maybe for vacations, and if your phone is eSIM compatible, and carry unlocked, then I definitely recommend checking out Aralo. The convenience, pricing, and simplicity really make it worth it and takes the guesswork and stress out of getting data internationally. Not just saying this because the video is sponsored, but I've genuinely done the research and have concluded that Aralo really offers some reasonable prices in their packages. If you're interested in checking out Aralo, there'll be a link down below. Now, if your phone is carrier locked, unfortunately, the only option you have is gonna be option two with data roaming. So if you are using data roaming, definitely do a little bit of research with your carrier. That way you're not surprised when you get the bill. And then lastly, if your phone is carrier unlocked, but your phone does not support eSIM, then you have the luxury of choosing between option one and option two. Hope this video helped you out. And if it did, make sure to subscribe to the channel to help me reach 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Also leave a comment and let me know where you're traveling to or where your dream destination is. I'd love to hear from you guys. Alrighty, leave a like on your way out and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.